you see these Roman numeral numbers down here? They add up to 1776, the year that America officially became the country we know of today. And also the year of the birth of another secret society, which was absorbed into Freemasonry after it was banned in 1785. But look, the base numbers. M is a thousand, C is a hundred, and X is ten. All you have to do is subtract the base numbers. 1776 minus a thousand, minus a hundred, minus ten. Or simply remove the Roman numerals which represent the base numbers. No, I'm not playing tricks on you. Neither are your eyes. But someone else is. Now that you've seen the prevalence and seriousness of this horrid number, now that you've seen what you've seen, I can show you where else it appears. This figure is represented by the numbers. To make this work, they had to remove the number one altogether and separate the two. Of course, we'd be too dumb to pick up on it. But 789 minus 456 is this. Multiplied by this lonesome two. That's right. This dark and mysterious figure is none other than the long anticipated Antichrist, the ruler of the Saturnian kingdom, which is on its way. And Australia has been steeped up to its neck in secret society since the early 1900s. World Economic Forum logo with this slash through the O's, is of course representative of the number of the ruler of the New Age, 666. The barcode is the primitive version of the worldwide system that Jesus predicted would revolve around the number of the beast. And as you can see, the base of every single barcode in all the world is 666. No matter if the lines are on the ends and in the middle are elongated or not. I found that out from the horse's mouth in an interview with the man who was commissioned by IBM to come up with a new way to automate data collection. There are in fact three sixes in the Google logo, which comes from this occult symbol. Coincidence. And he found in a Masonic lodge the square and compass symbol appears in the middle of a hexagram, which is a symbol used in the Royal Art of Freemasonry, witchcraft, as shown in this book. Well, among other things, the hexagram itself can be broken down to quite clearly represent 666. This is a Masonic squaring compass designed by the Manal Masonic Lodge, symbolizing world unity. Up the top you find the logo of the United Nations. Well, there are 33 segments in the UN logo, symbolizing the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. See this crop circle here, with the Masonic eye on top of the pyramid? I know nothing about crop circles and the phenomenon of them, but I know how many rays are coming off the eye. 33. 33 degrees of Freemasonry. Don't forget that the highest authority of Freemasonry already admitted to be the designers of the pyramidal seal in a 1962 edition of their magazine, The New Age. I've shown you how the inverted pentagram makes for the spelling of the word Mason in the same seal. Well, that same pentagram with the elongated top horns appears here in a European Union logo. An inverted satanic pentagram right in front of our eyes. Here's the European, European Union building architecturally mimicking the Tower of the Bell. That was the very same tower that the God of the Bible destroyed thousands of years ago, according to the Bible, when Nimrod, one of the admitted founders of the original craft of Freemasonry, tried to unite the world under one world government. So this logo and this building design is a clear statement to the God who intervened the first attempt at a world government. This is England's Secret Service logo for MI5 with the word intelligence being symbolized by the Eye of Lucifer who was viewed as the most intelligent entity in existence by the secret societies. And this is the symbol for the Information Awareness Office. You know exactly who's in control, and now you know exactly what they want, and they will get it. 
In a 1962 article written by former U.S. President and Freemason's wife, Edith Roosevelt, in the New Hampshire News, and speaking of the spiritual counterpart building for the United Nations, called the Temple of Understanding, she writes that the symbolism planned for the building dates back to the black magic practiced by the high priests of ancient Egypt, and that the building will contain a giant eye. You don't have to wonder why now, because you know why. This clothing designer is fully aware that the one eye symbol is synonymous with Satan and a hatred of Jesus. Does this movie poster make any more sense to you now? Well, are you ready for the second biggest shock of all? Whatever you think of what you're about to see, please come see me on the other side of this so I can show you something. This clip only goes for a few minutes. And keep in mind, the only reason I'm showing you this to you is because the writer and director of the preview of this movie style documentary was murdered along with his wife and his little daughter and his dog all before the produ production could begin the murder was made to look like a murder suicide the news of which never made national broadcasts just the local news case closed nothing to see here you have to ask yourself why, after so many movies with a dystopian, world war, totalitarian type theme, why was this movie so dangerous and strictly unacceptable for public viewing that a whole family would be murdered? Well, this movie was going to tell us about America's secret destiny and one other thing which you'll see on the other side of this clip, an amazing thing. As titled by Manly P. Hall over a hundred years ago, What's the secret destiny of America? Well, it's this. was David's hidden message inside the gray state, and could it be the reason for his death? Perhaps the scariest part of gray state's conceptual trailer 
is this character here, who appears to be operating a guillotine. David Crowley was very intentional in this frame of the movie. He added something that I believe he wanted the people to know about. Who is the identity of this executioner? If you look closely, you will see that this terrifying character is wearing something around his waist. It appears to look like an apron. The executioner wears a Freemason apron, complete with the all-seeing eye, the compass, and the two pillars. I do believe David Crowley is trying to tell us something. He is telling us that the organization behind the French and American revolutions, the organization behind the Italian revolution of 1830, the organization that outlined a plan to overtake the Vatican in a document called the Alta Vendita, the organization behind the Trail of Tears and the deaths of thousands of Native Americans under Freemason Grandmaster Andrew Jackson, the organization behind the Ku Klux Klan in the United States post-Civil War and its rebirth in 1915, the organization behind Hiroshima and Nagasaki during 33rd degree Freemason Harry Truman's presidency. These are men with a radical revolutionary agenda throughout the entire world because they worship and follow a radical revolutionary deity. The first to have led a revolt against the Most High Lord. When I was in high school, coming from a completely non-Christian and non-religious family or background, I distinctly remember the first time that I decided that the Bible or the New Testament, to be more precise, precise, was definitely not true. Made up, fairy tale, whatever. It was one verse, one scripture that to me at the time proved unequivocally that it wasn't written for our time. A prophecy that was impossible to be fulfilled. Here's the verse. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them and authority to administer justice was given them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony they bore of Jesus and because of the word of God. No way could guillotines be introduced as a form of execution in the 21st century, right? No way. Proof that the Bible was a prehistoric book written for prehistoric people. And this is long before he woke me up on a midnight highway to spare my life from a high-speed collision into a concrete wall. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, like the smartphone or the smartwatch, this is called the Smart Guillotine. Built by Chanel. You know, the perfume and clothing and accessories brand for the rich. What on earth does a perfume company have to do with chopping people's heads off? Well, I thought I told you that all of this is just the tip of the iceberg. I wonder who really owns Chanel. Well, here's their logo. And there is an eye in the design. And have you seen their drip design? How odd. Welcome to the real world. You ready? This is from a legislation archive from the Georgia House of Representatives in the 1995-96 sessions. This is Bill HB 1274 on the death penalty, guillotine provisions. How far along are we into enacting these bills worldwide? I don't know. Maybe they've been enacted already. But I just want to show you that in 1995 the ball was already rolling. Another ball that's rolling are the seven universal Noahide laws. They sound great from the outside designed so to conceal some terrifying details on the inside. Firstly, they were signed into US law in 1991 by George H.W. Bush by Mar on March 26. Here's the bill and resolution. It was named Education Day. As you can see in the details of resolution HJ 104, they are the seven Noahide laws resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in 1996. Every single president since H.W. Bush has annually re-signed this resolution. Many world leaders have called for the acknowledgement 
and observance of the seven Noahide laws, including the President of the European Union in July 2014 and the Australian Governor General Michael Jeffrey in 2008. And this will be international law. So what's the problem? Well, just for starters, the law against idol worship will include, quite specifically, the worship of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, which the Noahide laws will classify as blasphemy, and the punishment for transgressing the seven Noahide laws and for blaspheming the ineffable name of God by calling Jesus God is decapitation. I'll let you take that in for a second. This will be governed by a world court with no possibility of appeals. Something like this, an international Sanhedrin. Who do you think is truly behind these laws? Well, I can show you that right now. Here is the bill being signed into law by H.W. Bush, and here is their signature hidden in plain sight, the hidden hand of Freemasonry, displayed by this sinister and gloating looking individual. And you know what Freemasonry is a cover for now. Who do you think designed the guillotine in the first place? This guy, Joseph Guillotine, a Freemason. Still don't believe in the prophecies of Jesus Christ? You still in denial? Last night I dreamt about how things were. And I woke up here. Well, that's why the director was murdered and his wife, daughter, and dog. I think of them often, and sometimes when I need spiritual sobering up, I think of that fateful and evil night where that beautiful Christian family were brutally eliminated. If you think he wasn't onto something, well, he paid the greatest price to share this with you. Prophecy will be fulfilled. Listen to the words that come right after the execution by guillotine scripture in the Gospels. And I saw those who were such that they did not worship the beast, nor his image, and did not receive his mark of identification upon their forehead and hand. Remember this mark in the video? I'm not saying that the director knew what the mark would be, but based on the symbology, he knew who would be behind it. Look at the triangular symbol of the Freemasons. The Masonic Triangle around the eye and the Brotherhood of Saturn. Now look at the front cover of the book written by New Age author Maurice Nichol. The Mark. Same symbol. Identical to the symbol used by J.K. Rowling who said its design was inspired by the Freemasons. Who has this tattoo which represents the Baphomet. Or well, Solve Coagula is the process in which they will bring this new world system to life. It's identical to the Masonic motto of order out of chaos. Solve means dissolve or destroy. And coagula means to bring the elements back together into a new and higher form. A new and higher system. Jesus described it as the beast system and one way or another we will be marked as a form of identification in order to participate. But first, chaos must ensue. A deep Masonic truth, which is mostly true anyway, is that destruction precedes construction. It's like having to destroy a tree in order to create a table. The same principle applies to creating the new age. That's why I know that the process which involves the creation of a new system must involve the destruction of this one. Now, this is the last referenced work I'm going to use to show you who will be the, the head of that system, that one world government. A book by David Spangler, considered as one of the founding fathers of the modern new age. He also has an intimate relationship with the United Nations as shown in 1975 document which was uploaded to the UN archives in 2006. Now please pause to confirm that. Where you can find his name listed under the Board of Directors for the Planetary Citizens Group. In his book, Reflections on the Christ, 
David Spangler, remember, one of the founding fathers of the New Age and a member of the Board of Directors in a United Nations sanctioned program, repeatedly upholds and honors the entity known as Lucifer. He tells us all about what is required to step into the New Age. Well, mainly, what's required is a new understanding of the angel Lucifer. He writes that when this great project of evolution began, man went forth as consciousness to learn his divinity, and Lucifer went with him. It is important to see that Lucifer, described as an angel, a being, a great and mighty planetary consciousness. He says that, just like in Halloween and Trick or Treat, if the person offers a treat to Lucifer who knocks on his door, and the person says to Lucifer, come in, and I will give to you the treat of my love and understanding, and I will uplift you in the light and presence of the Christ, Christ meaning my outflow, then Lucifer becomes that being who carries the ultimate treat, the light of wisdom. Lucifer represents experience. Lucifer is literally the angel of experience. The Luciferic element becomes the true revealer of light, the angel of light. The light that reveals to us the path to the Christ comes from Lucifer. The Christ that he refers to obviously is the Antichrist spirit, who will eventually manifest on earth as one man. But for some odd reason on page 60 he feels compelled to clarify that he was only joking once when he said, maybe to enter the new age we all need to take a Luciferic initiation. Well, that's definitely no joke. That's right. Lucifer is the savior of the secret societies. The solar system was the manifestation of the consciousness of a very great being known as the solar logos. And if we go back to the secret society of the Brotherhood of Saturn, we read that mankind will be able to take a measure of egocentric power from the solar logos. In this way, Lucifer is the savior of humankind. Do you see who you're dealing with? These are the people above you, the rich, powerful, influential, overflowing in all areas of those who are steering society, and they're about to reach their destination. Who showed you? Who told you? Who warned you? Jesus Christ did. Ah, oh, those pesky Christians. In the animation flushed away, the villain Toad conspires to genocide all the rats in the soul world and replace them with a superior species, a new species. No one is aware except for this one rat who is briefly seen in the beginning. He's a Christian rat, a nut job, carrying around a plaque, as some real-life Christians used to, warning everyone of the impending doom that is upon them. What's the twist that's hidden in plain sight for no one to see? Well, the villain Toad, planning the new age, wears the ring of a Freemason. This ring. And he wears it exactly on the finger that a Master Mason should. It is worn on the third finger of the right hand. There is one who predicted it all. And they know that. That's why he's been so thoroughly discredited. Or so it seems. Yes, the nutjob Christian was right all along. Remember one last thing before I close. From Masonic New Age author Christopher Heyer, who spoke of the well-planned for and long-awaited invocation of the Prime Minister of the World, when he wrote in his book, A Massive Truth That I Wish With All My Being That You Would Grasp. Both satanic cults and Christian fundamentalists are closer to seeing the truth than most normal people. The world has always been at war, a spiritual war from the beginning. And if you don't know it, then you're losing the battle. The Gospel tell us so accurately that the enemy we wrestle against is not made of flesh and blood, but it is made of spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. That's where the real war is being waged, in the spirit. And now that we know what secret societies are and what they've tapped into, we can rest assured that that statement from the Gospels is true. That's why the common denominator between all of the secret societies is the anti-Christian sentiment. You need to ask yourself why. Why the negative obsession with Christianity? It's not as if Christians run the game. Freemasons have banned Bibles from schools. They teach evolution as a fact. Pornography is thriving. There are no Christian protesters left. Homosexuality is rampant and protected 
and Christianity is buckled. Which church preaches against Freemasonry? Which church is telling you about Satan and his hidden church, which has permeated every vein of society? So why do they hate Jesus if they're at the top of their game? Because Jesus Christ is real. That's why. And he left us, left us prophecy that they can't escape. See, the more they win, the more they fall into the hands of the prophecies of Jesus and his gospels. What a blessing for you. Those who would grasp this as truth, what good news for you and what a terrifying conundrum for them. If you've come this far and you still don't care or still unwilling to trust, then you deserve what's coming as a law of nature. Because you've been warned of all of it. The one world government clearly on its way. Cashless society, inevitable. The mark that each person will receive without which you won't be able to buy or sell or participate in this world. And the manifestation of the name, the number of the name of the one who will implement this system. 666. All of it, all of it is coming to pass. Inescapable we are from him. Everything and everyone will fall back into his hands where he will finally separate the goats from the sheep. Now watch the Bible destroy Freemasonry like no other book in two minutes. Regarding their lodges and obelisks, their heart is faithless. Now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their sacred obelisks. And speaking of the bloodline that gave birth to Jesus, God says, You shall not set up for yourselves a sacred pillar, which the Lord God hates. See what you're up against, Freemasonry? While Freemasonry meets and speaks in darkness and secret, Jesus said, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear, and in secret I have said nothing. Freemasons are known as builders. Well, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be dashed to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. Every Masonic Lodge is built so that all the members face the east. Who are these men with their backs toward the temple, facing the east and worshipping the sun? It is dis detestable. Freemasonry does evil in secret with their hidden hand, but they blow a trumpet over the hand that does good. But Jesus says, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing. Your good deed must be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You can't become a Mason if you're broke, blind, maimed, or have a criminal record. Jesus said, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Freemasonry takes pride in its secret rituals and is hungry to rule the world. The Gospels say that their destiny is destruction. They make appetite their God. They take pride in what should bring shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. Freemasonry believes that the light is but darkness visible. The Bible says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light. And Jesus further said, If therefore the light which is in you be darkness, how great a darkness that would be. Freemasons spend their whole lives taking gruesome oaths of secrecy. Jesus said, But above all things, above all things, my brethren, Stop this, the practice of putting yourselves under oath. Freemasonry is built upon a hierarchical system, a pyramidal system. Jesus said, for everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled, and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. We could go on and on, but we're going to end on this one. Exclusively written for the practices in the lodge room of political Freemasonry. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth who winks with his eye, signals with his feet, and teaches with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart. He always stirs up conflict. Therefore, the disaster will overtake him. He will suddenly be destroyed. That is Freemasonry through and through. And apart from the man in the mirror, prior to your baptism of the Holy Spirit, Freemasonry is the villain. They do go about with a corrupt mouth as they are sworn to secrecy. They do proverbially wink with the eye, making the one eye.
they most certainly signal with their feet and teach with their hands and fingers in the lodge, I can vouch. And they do plot evil, stir up conflict, in order to further their goal of the new age and the new world order, the greatest conflict being up ahead. But thank God Almighty above, the verse also tells us that disaster will overtake them, and they will be destroyed. One frightful and glorious day, you can count on that. Because the only thing you can count on in this world, more than death, more than taxes, is the Son of God. This is it. This is the last shock, and by far the biggest. If you ever needed intellectual proof that Jesus Christ is real and living right now, this is it. If Jesus and the Gospels weren't true, then Luciferians wouldn't be running the world. Atheists would, or some other version of modern man. Anyone, but not Satanists. Not the passionate enemies of Jesus. If Jesus wasn't real, then so-called Satanists would be scattered here and there, over the world, in little local covens, by silly teenagers rebelling against society and living in their own la-la land with their own little make-believe devils, being make-believe rebels. But no, people who believe that Lucifer is God run the world from top to bottom. They are dedicated to the core. They're highly sophisticated. They make the movies, they star in the movies, they write the songs, they sing and dance, they are worshipped as idols, they set trends, they live large, and they practice witchcraft, complete with sex magic and blood sacrifices. Why? Why do they do that? Why would they bother? Because witchcraft is real and has been since before civilization began hidden from the vile multitude, who have been stupefied by propaganda to the point that they don't believe in anything anymore. And who waged a war on witchcraft on your behalf? God did, the God of the Bible. If Jesus wasn't real, Luciferians wouldn't be building their paradise on earth. Atheists would. If Jesus wasn't real, Luciferians wouldn't be passionately hating him to the point of keeping their existence hidden under penalties of torture and death. Lo and behold, in the 21st century, yes, if Jesus was a myth, Luciferians wouldn't be working overtime to inadvertently fulfill every prophecy that Jesus gave us. Can anybody read me? What part of Jesus foretold a worldwide cashless system, a worldwide government and a worldwide religion do you not get? If Jesus wasn't real, why do former Satanists freely admit that, the, that only the true Christians are immune to witchcraft? They have no power over the disciples of Jesus. How is that possible? And what about this one that's been going around? If the Gospels were written by the Catholic Church in order to control people, then why didn't they include a Pope in the Scriptures? There's no Pope here. Why didn't they include instructions to obey the priests? There's no priests in the New Testament, except for God himself and all his disciples. We're all priests. If the Gospels were an invention of the Catholic Church, why does Jesus say to call no man father except your father in heaven? Yet every priest holds the title of father. If the Gospels were an invention of the Catholic Church to control people, why were only priests allowed to own a Bible and not the common people? Why did they burn William Tyndale at the stake, a Christian scholar who translated the Bible into English? Are you with me? Please help me understand how you don't believe in Jesus when even your enemies, the high-ranking Freemasons, think that you're stupid for not believing in Satan. There was the first shock, which was the fact that an international secret society exists at all, and that all people in power, prominence, celebrities, they're members of it. That was the first shock. The second shock was the oaths they take and the rituals they perform. Decapitated heads, brains exposed to the sun, drinking wine from human beings, skulls all done by the people you respect the most. Pretty shocking if you have any brains left in your skull and heart left in your ribcage. The third shock was the reason they took the oaths 
and perform the rituals. And that reason is that the secret society they all belong to is in fact Satanism. The fourth shock was the details of witchcraft and the details of the new satanic age, the Saturnian kingdom, where billions are planned for death to pave the way for a spiritual and technological utopia. But do you know what the biggest shock of all is? The shock that surpasses all of them combined. It's Jesus. Jesus is the shock. He's the shockwave, the reality and truth of Him. Because that changes everything. He changes everything. The greatest news you could never think up that God left His abode to come here, a form of hell, manifest on earth, to be ridiculed and executed to save our sorry asses by taking a bullet for us. Don't worry, His second coming won't be so sacrificial. Better start fearing like you fear a cop and like you fear a judge. Oh, I know you tremble in front of them. But you don't fear God? Oh, how we love the darkness and sin. You, possibly you, loved gossip. You loved sex and porn. You loved sodomy. You couldn't stop lying. You couldn't stop cussing. You loved your idols, singers, actors, sports people, sports teams. Putting people who fart, smell and eventually die on a pedestal. You just couldn't cut yourself off from the ways of the world. Purity? Who wants to be pure? I have to be pure? I have to live holy? Stop sinning? That's so boring. What kind of God is this? To hell with that God. Well, do you like filth in your home? Do you? Do you like filth on your carpet, on your clothes, on your face? Do you invite filthy guests over and give them a share in all your belongings and all your power? Do you give them the keys to your house and car? No, you don't. But the Creator, who has the greatest house of all, he should. We can barely earn a thousand bucks a week. And we don't give that away to anyone. But now God should share his wealth with you, the unclean, the unrepentant. Is it too much to ask your filthy guests to clean up before they enter? To watch their mouths, to control their willy? Is that too much to ask? Oh, but if God was real, what about all the children that die? What about them? What are you doing about them? Are you still stuck on which phone you're going to upgrade to or what's for dinner? Why don't you leave your abode, your luxuries and your loved ones and risk it all to go save some children yourself? Oh, but what about all those who have never heard of Jesus? Let me ask you, what's your excuse? I know they have one, but what's yours? You've heard of him. Every morning you wake up and look at the calendar is a testament to his name because it's 2021 in Australia. It's 2021 in Brazil. It's 2021 in China. It's 2021 in every single every single country in the world. So let me ask you, 2021 years since what? Like I said, just waking up in the morning and knowing what day it is is a testament to him. But if God was real, why wouldn't he just show himself? Show himself to who? To you? You can't even get on your knees and repent. You can't even hate sin and scream out to him. So why would he? How do I get the girl if I don't ask her out? And if I do, maybe she rejects me the first time and the second. How bad do I want her? How hard will I try? Most haven't even knocked on his door. Well, I did. I just kept knocking and knocking. And then I started banging and banging. I refused to leave his porch. I lay there like a hungry puppy. But even when he answered the door, I did the runner. Because he was too big for me. And I loved sin a little too much. Yet he still left the light on for me. But here's the craziest part about people who ask me why he doesn't just show himself the way they'd like him to. Their hearts have been so hardened that even if he did appear to them, in two weeks, they would go back to being their old self, and he knows that. That's why. They might even forget it ever happened. Oh, that was just a crazy day. That was probably all in my head. Oh, how we love to make excuses. But if God was real, what about all the other gods? What other gods? Did Buddha perform a miracle for you? Did he affect a plethora of witnesses? 
Were his followers stoned to death, sawn in half, eaten alive? Did historians of his era leave any trace of him? Did he prophesy all the kingdoms that would appear on earth, and in what order? Did he foretell of worldwide floods, of enemies that would despise his followers, use his name as a castle, and eventually attempt to set up a world kingdom? Did his appearance change the calendar from one end of the world to the other, and predict that his appearance would in fact change the calendar? What did the Prophet Muhammad do for you? Apart from stealing Jesus from billions of people and corrupting the Gospels, did he dedicate his entire life to sinlessness? Did he remain celibate so that his blood could make a difference in the hidden realm? By the science of sacrifice, which is practiced in secret every day, in order to shield your very soul? No, he didn't. Instead, he had 11 wives. One of them was nine years old, and he lived like a king. While the real king lived like a slave and died like one too and washed the feet of his disciples while demons trembled at his name and presence and still do. And let's not even bother with the other pagan gods, Osiris, Odin, Vishnu, all inventions of fertility cults that worship the sun, sex, genitals, death, destruction, agricultural religions. Did anyone else apart from Jesus Christ ever say the words, I am the truth? Have those words even ever come out of someone's mouth? I've heard of, I know the truth, I have the truth, but I am the truth? That doesn't even make sense. Unless truth itself was once upon a time born on earth as a man. Well, of course he's the truth. Where are all the heart-wrenching, knee-buckling testimonies about the indescribable power of this Holy Spirit? which comes in to sweep you off your feet and drown you in its tides, changing you forever. Where are all those testimonies? I'll tell you where they are. In the Christian column. That's where. Oh yeah, you, you'll get them here and there in every genre. But Christian testimony simply outclips the rest. Where are all the life-changing, electrifying Hindu testimonies? The Muslim testimonies? A Muslim, Buddhist or a Jew on the street corner? Or from the proverbial rooftops, shouting the truth for all to hear, no matter the cost, because they love us that much, because he loves us that much? Where, where are they? And Freemason testimonies? Have you even heard of one of those? Satanic testimonies? You ever heard of one of those? A Freemason on his knees, sobbing from joy because of the overwhelming knowledge that Lucifer loves him? No Mason or Satanist has ever done or heard of such a thing. But the biggest cult in size is the cult of society. Where do you think the word culture comes from? And the TV, the doctors, the idols, the PhDs, the scientists, they are the priests of the cult of society. You atheists think you don't live in a religious world of your own, filled with daily rituals and daily worship? Even your beliefs require faith in what your priests teach you. Evolution, no proof. Age of the earth, no proof. Distance of the sun, all faith-based on what you are told by strangers. You can see the rings of Saturn with your telescopes, but you can't see the buggy on the moon that was left behind in 1969. Yet you still believe, because you have faith. Don't you worry, no matter who you are, you live in a religious world, because life is religion. And if you're still in the I'm not religious category, think again. You all worship something or someone. And your religion is futile. But for you, for the one, whoever you are, remember the advantage that evil has over good. A little good doesn't destroy evil, but a little bit of evil destroys all good. See this glass of water? One single drop of poison is enough to render the whole lot useless or deadly. That means that 99% of the goodness and purity of that water amounts to nothing, all because of one single drop. The whole glass is evil. And so it is with the human soul. You better believe it. Does anyone go out with a stain on their face or on their shirt? You think the soul can't be stained? Think about it. Just one lie makes you a liar. So you can't go where life is, stained with death. 
Now, in case someone thinks I'm playing the high and mighty role, I tell you this. I used to be a liar. I used to be a pervert. I used to be a drunkard. I used to smoke all kinds of poison. I used to have angry outbursts, use a filthy mouth, indulge in filthy humour. I used to. Past tense. But no more. He finally summoned me. He called my name for the last time. He took my dog, then my music. He took my band, broke it all and broke me, flooded me clean. He sent for me. He woke me up from a deep sleep on a high speed midnight highway with a whisper, an actual whisper in my ear and only meters between me and a concrete wall with my name on it because he knew I had it in me. I had it in me to lay it all down, risk everything, so I can take a stand for him, for the Gospels, and for you. Well, this is me taking a stand. Brothers and sisters, I did all this for just one person, and I'll be hated and mocked, and worse maybe, so that that one, whoever you may be, will wage war on sin and believe. Don't let even one drop in. No matter what the distractions this evil world may place in your path in order to bury itself and its poison in your heart where it will take root and overpower the 99% goodness in you. Just like only a few find success in this world, even fewer will find the kingdom. It's far more difficult than winning X Factor or making a billion dollars or reaching a 33rd degree of a secret society. It's as difficult as loving your greatest enemy. And that's just about impossible. But if you can figure out how to do that, then you found the road to life. And I hope to see you soon. God love. Jesus wins.